Uh, we are, I'm Vahe Kachadorian and this is Katrina Topolinski. And we both teach in the math department. Yes. And to spruce up our lectures so that uh, in a math class students aren't writing as much down, we decide to work with the iPad and we teach entirely out of the iPad. So we create the notes beforehand and we upload it onto D2L in PDF file format. And they print it out before they come to each of our class sessions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we want to do today is walk you through the basic features of the program Doceri. All right. So first of all, um, it's called Doceri, and um, it is free on your iPad. So you go to the uh, App Store and download Doceri for free. Um, it is on some of the computers in the AC building. Okay. Otherwise, you can get it on your laptop to do wirelessly. Um, also, you can connect. So there's this connector that we have. Um, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> so if you guys want to look at it and take down the information about it, um, you can connect and actually do wired. So any classroom that has a projector will be able to use it. Okay. To connect wirelessly, there's this um, picture that comes up anytime you sign onto the computer. So on your Doceri, um, when you first sign in, you get to choose between from my iPad or through a computer. Okay. So that's what first comes up. I can show you on the dot cam. So you first open Doceri and it says from my iPad alone or through a computer. So we would choose through a computer. They give you a list of all the computers you've used before. And then there's this picture down here that has a little camera. Okay, we can click on that camera and it brings up the screen. What they want you to do is put the little um, picture that's on the computer. There's a word for it, I know it, but I don't know the word. So <laughs> you put this in there and it'll automatically connect to the computer. Okay? Oops, I just turned off the power. <laughs> you know, good, good stuff happens. So, <laughs> and the end. It is working on turning back on. Oops. Um, if you have a case, make sure it doesn't cover the, com or the camera because I've, where'd it go? <laughs> um, you, when you first get Doceri on your computer, it'll ask you for um, a password and you, you can make it up whatever you want to because it says new password, so you can put whatever password you want. Okay. So just a tip in the classrooms that have it, it's usually the building, so AC, and then the room number, 102. So that would be this password, okay? Not capitalized. Nothing's capitalized. Okay. Okay. Um, it's working on turning back on. Okay. So what's really cool about the Doceri program is that really, um, we have created note templates for almost all our classes except pre-algebra that we do the work on the board. But for pre-calc, MO3, intermediate algebra, um, elementary algebra, even calculus, we created note templates for all the students. Uh, so when they print it out and come to class, all the definitions, all the verbiage, all the words are already written for them so they don't waste any time writing it down so they can just focus on what we're saying and absorb more and uh, maximize their learning experience. That's the idea behind it. Okay. Um, so if, if I go on D2L, I'll show you guys that I've categorized all the notes by chapters. And so they know exactly what day what they're going to have a quiz or a test and what section is going to cover it on this day. So they go on there, they click it, they print it out, and they bring it to class. It's that simple. OK? Are they pretty good about printing and bringing it? Um, I I, like honestly, honestly, it's about 50-50. It's about yeah, okay. yeah. What do you do with the other half? I don't slow down the class. And you, we warn them. Like, we have these notes available for you. If you didn't get the definitions down, they're online available. And we always put them available in PDF form so that they can edit them. And then um, I tell my students that have iPads or any tablet to download the app Notability because that's an app that lets you draw on um, PDF files. So you can actually take, they can take notes on their iPads down, by downloading my PDF notes that are online and then writing s from Notability straight on the notes. Are we in? Yeah. So I'm in. You're, You're not. Switch. Okay. Oh, doc cam. So now Vahe is going to show you some of the tools that we have. Okay, so when you log in to Doceri, uh, I want to go all the way to the beginning. 
Okay, so when you go in here, you go to your folder, and then um, you press this little plus sign at the corner, and this creates a brand new file for you. Just pick the default settings that there is for iPad. This is great. And so this brand new document comes up, okay? Now, you have uh, the following features. You have this right there. Oh, I can just use the camera. You have this feature right there. You press it, and this helps you choose the background. So for us, we use the graph square medium, and then we have a graph paper for a background. So then I'm going to start writing it, and this helps me create lines. So I don't, I'm not writing diagonally, right? So it's very structured. OK, so I'll get into that. So you, have, you can make it a green chalkboard, a black chalkboard. And um, if you want to get creative, if you're talking about polar graphs, and you can put this in there. And then you can talk about lemniscuits and all that fun stuff, right? Lemniscuit, it's, um, or limassol, I think it's a French word for snail. So it's uh, polar equations, and we graph them in pre-calculus. And when we do, these nice floral patterns come about, whether we have 2, 4, 5, 10, 12 petals. OK? So it's cool stuff like that. Um, if you don't want that for your background, you can use, how about a map of Asia? OK? So you have all these options okay, to modify your lesson and just make it that much more interactive and appealing to your students, OK? Now, I'm going to choose the square medium. And if you click on this mountain button, it's really the picture, you can actually go into your camera and take a picture right there in class and upload that picture into your lesson. Or if you want, you can go into your photo library and choose a picture and bring it in, OK? so. You go in here. Uh, let's say you have um, this diagram right here. And it has to do with the classes at Moore Park College and how they're connected. So you're trying to make a point. You can resize it however you want with your finger, place it however you want, rotate it however you want. Okay? And then you click off of it. Now it's set. Okay? It's sat down. It's, it's settled. What you want to do now is if, if you don't like the position of the picture, Hold your finger on it, select it, and then move it around again and resize it however you want, and then relocate it if you want. All right? Now, if you don't like that, you can press Done or Cancel. And let's say you want to undo your last move and you made a mistake, which we often do, just press the Back button, OK? And it just follows your last moves, and it will eliminate or delete your last move, OK? Now, before. Um, the way I write on the screen is you can use a stylus. And the stylus that I was using had a soft rubber on the head. And after a while, depending on how hard you press on the screen, it could definitely wear out. And what happened to, my, to me is um, it stopped reading it every stroke because it responds to heat. So I stopped using a stylus, and I started writing with my fingers. The okay, best is with the mesh. Yeah, So the not mesh the rubber. Tip. OK? Lower. So you can zoom in however you want, all right? You can zoom in so that you are going to write on the line, oh. OK? And then just with two fingers, you can move the screen. Not just one, because one will write on it, OK? But two can resize it and relocate the entire screen, OK? So the lesson for today, and you can just write whatever you want, all right? Now, the cool part is you're messing with this, all right? You're zooming in and out, cutting, uh, pasting. The students don't see this at all. All they see is the screen, OK? None of the screen isn't moving, OK? Nothing is moving for them. But you get to see all the background work, OK? So they're not interacted or they're not distracted by all your little um, modifications during lessons, OK? Which is nice. So up here, you'll see that there are six uh, features that you can add on. This one here is the eraser. That's fixed. You can't touch it. I mean, you can modify it. This is the eraser. And you can make it as thick as you want with your finger and just click off of it. These six here 
I, I can make them markers. If you click on it twice, you have the choice of choosing the color. You have the choice of messing with its size. And you have the choice of messing with its spacing. Okay? We so found you get, that size of two point is the best. Is ideal, yes. Yeah. And then you can also even mess with its opacity. Okay? So I'll just leave it at 100%. And then just mess with whatever color you want. And then boom, you're done. So for us, if we're trying to accentuate something or a concept, we use red usually. The instructions are usually in blue or black. Uh, the problem is usually in green. And so you can choose one of the features to be a highlighter or a spray paint can, if you'd like, okay, or a brush. All right. We also have um, lines. So if I choose that one to be a line, okay, I can have an easy time. Whoa. I can have, <laughs> I got to work on my, <laughs> my size. <laughs> I'm too large. Okay, so let's make this black so you see what I'm talking about. And here is an easy way to plot the x and y axes. And you can go straight into your graph. Okay, if I'm talking about circles, I can make one of these buttons up here a circle. Click it and then get off of it. Now, put your finger down. Whoa, put your finger down and then resize the circle how big you want it to be, and then let go, and there, there's your circle. Okay? And if you're talking about inequalities, you can talk about shading, and maybe that's where the highlighter will come into play. Okay? So let's turn this into a highlighter, and let's make it uh, red just for effect, and then get in there. Okay? And then mess with the size, and here we go. So definitely play around with the features because it's really, really cool. And what we do is find our favorites that we like and keep them up at the top. So you're not actually having to go through and choose the pen and everything. So we choose our top. I have four colors that I like and then I have the line tool. Right. You don't have to change these because you have six options plus the eraser. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one other feature I forgot to mention was if you put your finger down, you, this happens. You have paste or select all. So what you can do is move your finger around and you have now lassoed whatever you wrote. If you're not happy with what you wrote and you want it gone, cut. It's gone. All right. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? I want that back. Let's put the undo button and there it is again. Maybe I want a portion of it gone. So put your finger on maybe just the y-axis and it highlights it for you and then you just press cut and it's gone. Okay? I mean, you can always use the eraser, but I think lassoing is a lot more fun, right? Um, and so the eraser will, if you reuse your notes and you have been erasing, the undo button actually remembers what was there and will bring back what you erased. But not all of what you erased. So, no, lassoing is the way to make it gone forever. Permanently yeah. gone. So when it always, I always lasso, I never use the eraser on this program. So a couple more features on this. Um, if you, you don't use the eraser? I always lasso to erase. Always lasso and then cut. Yes. We have a wrist guard. If you ever want to use it, you want to put your hand on the iPad and as you're writing. So you put up, not that, this little screen up here. And then you can size the wrist guard however you want. And then this is the max it goes. So I can put my hand on here, and it will not write on the screen. And then I can just go ahead and do this. Okay? I usually am writing in the air. Okay? But if you want to put your hand on the screen, you are able to do that with the wrist guard implemented. Okay? And then when you want it gone, just bring it all the way down. Okay? Now, let's say you are in need of another page. Simply, you can just write, draw this or press this arrow here, and another page is automatically created for you. Okay, and you just go about your business. Press it again. You can. Uh, you need to have something on the screen for another page to be created, and so there it is. Let's say you're on the second page or on the first page, and you decide, you know what? I really don't want the second page there. So let's go to the second page. Bring this down. Okay, and and make sure. Make sure this is completely gone, so the page is empty. You bring down the top screen, and you have all these features come up. You really don't use all these. The only thing I imagine you would use is to get rid of a page. And this button here with the, the red guy, press it, page be gone. Okay.
So you can add as many pages as you want. You can take away as many pages as you want. Uh, just bring down the top screen. Okay. Now, another feature that this program offers is you can actually record your lesson, which is great. There's a record button up here. So if you press it before you begin, it'll just take in everything uh, you're saying and doing. And then um, once it's over, you stop it. And at the end, you can actually press the play button and it plays your entire lesson if you'd like. Okay? We have never done that, I don't think. At least I haven't used it um, because I want all the lectures to be live. And, I haven't posted any lectures online because I want people to come to class as opposed to, hey, if I miss it, I'm OK. All right? I always encourage the students to get their notes from you know, their peers. OK. Uh, let's see. So OK, so this is the horizontal mo mode. My iPad is like this. If I hold my iPad this way, okay, the mode for you, for you, not the students, changes. And so you get this big screen down here and this little screen up there. All right. Now this allows for you to access another feature. And this is now the cursor. Okay, if you want to point to something and you don't really want to move, you put your finger up on the screen on down there or up there. Okay? And so you I'm in the way here. Your cursor occurs uh, appears on the down screen and this is what your students are going to see. So what you can do is move. Okay? You can press this button and it messes with the location of the cursor, right? And then if you don't like the green guy, you can go ahead and change it to red or maybe to white or I want an arrow. In fact, I want an orange arrow. So let's get it there. And if you're trying to point to something, just go to it. Pay attention to where you are on the top screen and based on what the students see down here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So you have a cursor, but the cursor only appears in the vertical mode. If you're in horizontal, you have a full screen and you have no access to that cursor. All right. What I like also about the vertical mode is that I can zoom in and the top screen always shows me the full screen. So it highlights where I'm at on this zoom screen. Oops, I brought up the wrist guard. So. Yeah, it's very sensitive. I always teach in the vertical mode and he always teaches in the horizontal mode, so. Yeah, always. So it's a matter of preference, whatever works for you. Okay. I also have fatter fingers than you do, so. <laughs> so I need all the space I can get. Okay, um, basic features, inserting pictures. Okay, so let's say I am happy with my lesson and I want to, uh, I created my note templates and I want to email it to my students. So what I do is you press this uh, square with the arrow on it and this helps you export the file. So I share it as a PDF and so press at each stop or at each slide it just makes the cut after each At each slide page. is usually the best bet because if you've accidentally created a stop in it using the pull down feature, then it won't include that. So at each slide, make sure that there's two slides on each. OK, so when you get to this point and you're trying to share this as the PDF file with the students, uh, you want to press this arrow, the export arrow, with and what happens is you get this drop down screen. You can either email it or save it to Dropbox. Okay, now of course we save all our PDFs in Dropbox because we want to access it in, for future semesters. And then if I change something in my notes and I want to share it with Katrina's lesson for, before she teaches it tomorrow, I go ahead and I mail it to her. So make sure your iPad is connected to your mail and you have internet of course. And then you just get in here, type it up. Uh, put in the subject and then press send and she automatically gets the PDF of the note template that I created. So it's very user friendly and it's very nice to have, um, especially if you make last minute changes. So to save paper. It knows that you have Dropbox on there, so when everybody's on Canvas, everybody um, can connect with Dropbox through Canvas. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so oh, interesting. That's very convenient. Yeah, right? Okay, that makes it a lot easier. Yeah. So um, in vertical mode, the students are going to get two slides per page. And that'll save paper. And of course, the writing will be a little smaller. But if you, if you are in horizontal mode, and I try to export this file, okay, students are going to get one slide, one slide per page. So it's bigger. It's landscape mode. Yes. 
Okay. So you have that option. Either two slides for vertical mode, and then landscape mode, you're going to get one slide per page. And the students can't change it on their end. Right. Because you're creating the PDF, and then it's there. And they printed it out, and they bring it to the school, and they work on the paper. Correct. Right. So what we do is create uh, the templates, and then they come in, and then we just fill it out all together. Right. Not now. Um, another th so um, I created a lot of the outlines for all of our courses, and okay. I've shared those to Dropbox also, so that I can just share that Dropbox file with people that are teaching that course. So to do that, you need to hold your finger down on one of the files, and they'll all start vibrating, right? <laughs> so when they're wiggling, you know it's a good thing. So then you've got that, again, that button with the box with the arrow through it. Um, you can either email the project or open in. So open in means saving to Dropbox. So you can save it to Dropbox here and then choose where you want it in your Dropbox. So I've done that and saved them all to one place. Another good thing about um, holding your finger down and they're all wiggling, so I keep everything in the right files. So I'm going to take my MO7, hold your finger down on it, oops, I grabbed it, and then drag it and drop it into the file that you want it in. So my MO3, I'm going to drag, hold your finger down until they start wiggling. Hello. There we go. And then I'm going to drag it and drop it into, oh, that one already has it. It's my other MO3. OK? So then you can keep everything nice and organized. So here's all of my files. From previous semesters? Yeah, from all my semesters. Now, You've if been you using this for a while? Yes. <laughs> for a lot of semesters? Yes. And you can, ha you can choose to have your folders shown um, based on most recent use or based on their name. So this is an order of name versus re most recent. So your current project? Uh, if you go back to the folders, actually. Oh, the folders is the top left button. Oh, could you even see it? It looks like a folder. <laughs> um. OK, so if you go into where are your folders, OK, I guess. If you go into one of the folders, you see all the files. If you don't want one of these files in that folder, just click on this until it vibrates. And then what you can do is you can duplicate the document just in case you want to clean it up and provide it for your, if you're teaching multiple classes of the same course, you can do that. Um, you can export. We talked about that. Uh, if you press the File Folder button, actually, you can move to Parent Folder, which means it'll take it out and put it in the initial screen when you first log in. So it'll be with like all the other files there. Or you can just tell it to move to a new folder, and it'll create a new folder for you. Okay. So that's how you create folders: is if you have a project, and um, you just make it vibrate and you choose it and then you tell it to move to a new folder and that new folder will be created for you and of course you can call it whatever you want. Okay. So if this is untitled, the way you change the title is just click on that name and then press that little X and um, call it whatever you want. Press done. There it is. Okay. So it's easily modified. Okay. What do you guys think? You like it? Yeah. Very cool. impressive. Yeah. yeah. I'm not a techie person, but I really like it. <laughs> well, and it's nice because you can walk around the classroom. Yeah, right. That's the thing. That's the beauty of this. Uh, you don't have to be tethered, so. Well, you don't have to stand with your back to the class around the whiteboard exactly. either, yeah. or with the little document thing, which drives me nuts. Right, right. So yeah, you can watch their faces. Well, you see confusion. Down. You slow down, you know? Yeah. I mean, you're always reading. So you love it. I do. You do. Okay. And I don't get the whiteboard marker stain on my. Right. All right. Yeah, on the heel of my hand, so, which is nice. If I go into PC mode, I'm making all these um, modifications on my lesson. And all you see, and I'm zooming in and out. So like I said, you're messing with your lesson the whole time. I can even exit out of here and go on the internet and find the picture appropriate for my lesson, cut and paste it, and then put it in. And the entire time, the students, all they see is this screen. So your lesson is not interrupted. Okay? And they have no idea what I'm doing here. All right? It does time out eventually. If you stay out of the app for too long, long enough, yeah. It'll just be like <laughs>
Okay. So Yeah. <laughs> okay, you've taken long enough. So that's what she was saying about you don't have to be tethered if you're not connected to the computer. You can just walk up and down the aisle and you can just keep an eye on everybody while you're um, talking about your lesson for the day. And that will automatically save it, right? The screen that you made or the yes. page? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It'll save whatever you did last. So when you exit, you go back to it, it'll be exactly how it was. Okay. So you never have to push save. Okay. All right. So a couple of things you need. You need, of course, the program Doceri. You want to get Dropbox. Okay, make sure you're connected on your device to the network here. Um, what else do they need? I think that's it. That'll get you through everything you need. An iPad, <laughs> An iPad would be nice. <laughs> Any tablet. Any tablet. Yeah. And I. I have actually students who come to class with their devices and then they actually have these notes on their, on their own tablets, so I encourage that as long as they're not surfing the internet, so you got to keep an eye out for that. Yeah, and Notability is the one that works well for PDFs on the iPad. So Doceri will not let you open a PDF and edit it, it'll only let you open Doceri files. Yes? There is an app for Doceri on the, just the Android, mm -hmm. but it doesn't look the same. Right. Um, well, and my friend has the Surface, and she got the app, but it looks different. No, I think it's the same thing. Oh, is it? So you should be able to connect. They just have, like, different yeah. Icons. Yeah. Oh, okay. You should be able to connect. Do you want to show them what the outline looks like that we make? Here, I'll, oh. I'll open one real quick. I was going to do... Um, We've mentioned notability a couple of times, so I just wanted you to see what it looks like. So here's notability. You click on it, and I started using notability when I started teaching out of the iPad, and then I converted to Doceri because I just realized it, it was, I really liked the fact that I didn't have to be tethered to my desk, and I, fact that I liked the fact that I did not, they didn't see any of the changes that I made during the lesson. So that definitely changed my way of teaching. Um, I have, you know, my ML7 exams. I would upload my exams on here, and then I would write on this, okay? And then I would just send these solutions to my students. So they got it in color, which was nice, okay? And if you like Notability, you just play around with the features. You have, of course, the highlighter here. You can mess with how bright or thicker color its color is and then you have the pencil to write with the the cutting is you know their version of the lasso in doseri okay um, this finger you can move it but you can just also move it with two fingers so you just play around with that here um, this button here helps you export the file okay it's the undo button you have an eraser and if you want to write actual text you press on that T and then you choose where you want it to go and then you type it in okay so notability was like I said the initial um, program I started using but I converted to Doceri after a couple semesters because Katrina and another faculty were urging me to do it because it was so much better and they're completely well, right. Um, does, our notability also lets them see every um, zoom in and zoom out and pen color change every and all of that. Every modification, right. They see everything, you changing color, you lassoing, you doing everything. Doceri, right. you don't see any of that. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's a huge advantage. Right. So this is what our uh, um, one of the no outlines looks like. So this is what they would print out at home and then I just fill in the blanks. So we would do each of these problems together. So then all they have to write is the actual work shown. Yeah, even the problems are written for them. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, and then you can have whatever blank pages. And definitions, which takes so much time to write, it's already there for them. These are excerpts from the book, cut and paste, and you just include it into your slides. So the students, they try to keep um, with you with writing the notes and yes. understand the concept. Right. Yeah, they're, they're, missing yeah. Something. they're missing stuff and they're not learning what you're right. showing. So this is, it's right there. And other teachers have done where they actually do the notes from scratch in class and then they upload the PDFs of the completed notes on to desire to learn because um, it keep, then students can just watch them the entire time instead of having to try to keep up because they can print out the completed notes at home. Also, if you have students that have um, accommodations and need note takers, 
super easy to, uh, you don't even have to ask for a volunteer because you can just send them the PDF to their email um, as soon as class is over. So there's no need for a note taker volunteer or copies to be made or anything like that because you can just send them the completed notes. So it's really nice if there's any accommodations. That's a question that, um, you said you haven't used it but the audio recording, mm -hmm. but if you did, if you were going to use it, would you be able to make it successful? You haven't used it yet, so maybe. I would imagine. I'm just the only issue I'm thinking in my head is the size of the file. So maybe sharing that would be a problem, but I can look into that. I don't know how it saves either. What kind of file? Yeah. We'll have to look into it because for hybrid courses, I think that would be very helpful. Very useful, yeah. Yeah, very. Right. Or like if you have this class or something, mm -hmm. everyone's always worried about, oh my god, I have this class. I have someone come in, so like I just substituted for a coworker. And I basically, it was just handing out papers because I didn't know her lesson. I didn't mm -hmm. know kind of what they were doing. I had a basic idea, so I handed them papers and said, here's the group work. If they had questions, I was like, oh, I could try and answer this. Whereas right. something like the audio, mm -hmm. it's so much easier. You just have to play it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Press play. You just have to hit the play button and yeah. then you get your own teacher. Exactly. Things in. Pretty cool. That is cool. Mm -hmm. We'll have to experiment with that. We will. Yeah, if you figure out, let me know. I okay, will. For sure. Yeah. So in a nutshell, I would say that's Doceri. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I actually was doing an observation in Chris Cole's class, and she had it, and I was like, is that? Yeah. And she's changing colors. And right. She's, I mean, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to go check it out. I was so impressed. It's very nice. It was really, she's walking around, and mm -hmm. I mean, it was just, it was really impressive. Yeah. Um, the class was engaged. I just thought it was cool. What was the class? It was Calc. Oh, was it was mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, um, about half the department, I would say, uses it. Wow. Mm, maybe less. At least five. Do you notice a difference in like getting through your curriculum or you know, your pass rates? I mean, are you seeing students more engaged, or is it just like an easier I, for you to use? I had an old student stop me actually yesterday and say, um, that she was in college algebra and she's doing well and she's like, I loved the way you taught and having us thus have the responsibility of printing out the notes before class was it's like that really worked well for me. Wow. So good. It's nice. Some yeah. students complain because it's a lot of paper and then I they mean have to pay for the copies. Yeah, they have to pay for the copies or but I mean I always bring up you can take it on your iPad. I have several students this semester actually doing it on their iPads. And it's nice because they'll walk up to me with questions after and zoom in on their you know, they have their all their stuff on their iPad, yeah, yeah, yeah. so That's it's really cool. nice. For me, student engagement has drastically improved. I oh, get yeah. to be closer to all of my students, whether they like it or not. <laughs> and I make sure that when I... Right, right. I can uh, put a problem on the board and say, okay, guys, do this problem right now. And if somebody's just slacking on their, on their Facebook, I go to them and put your phone away and I stand over them until they start working on it. Because I can, because my iPad is in my hand and I don't have to be yeah. tethered. It's amazing. You get to reach out to the entire audience, not just the people in the front. Cool. So mm -hmm. If you had um, students who, you know, they're not usually using their iPads and stuff, does it take them a while to, like, you know, catch up to your, you know, the way that you're teaching? Yes, sometimes it does, and it does. I try to not slow the entire class down, but you know, a lot of the times you're going to have somebody, can you go back to the previous page? And you have to go back and just wait for them to catch up for like a split second. Uh -huh. But it's not that bad. Uh -huh. It's not that bad. And sometimes they'll take pictures of the screens. So if there's some pages have like four definitions on it, and they'll just take a picture of it. Yeah, I see a lot of this. Yeah. yeah I see that too. Which is nice. I mean, I tell them I don't mind. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, you have to step away after all the content is there. Yeah. In my well, pre-algebra class, I have a girl on the front who takes pictures of the work. Yeah. And I, so I'm cognizant of that. So you just have to step away and give her a minute and don't erase anything. Make sure you're yeah. not making a weird face when they take a picture. Or in the picture at all. Oh my <laughs> I, one. What I like about this, though, is that if somebody is slow and they ask you, like, oh, no, go back, it's not like I just erased it. Because right. you can go back right. to the previous yeah. screen. Right. Where right. when I taught on the whiteboard, it was like, go back too late, you know. I'm not going to rewrite the whole problem, I'm sorry. So yeah, what, it's nice because it's always there. And people have actually come up like, you've never taught us this. And they can go like in the file, like, it's right here, this exact problem, you know. Other departments also use the I think that's the purpose of today. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, we're not sure if they do, but we, this started out as a pilot program with uh, MO7. We got a grant from CSUN. And so we had about 10 people, 10 of the faculty participating. And so we were handed these iPads. And then Ogimachi uh, said, um, this, these programs are great. He looked into Notability, and then we looked into Doceri. And so it just flourished from there. Right. So. so you're trying to spread the word. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely enhance your lectures, okay? And I guess if you uh, buy the actual Doceri desktop version, you can change the bottom right corner to be whatever you want it to be, or not have anything there at all. Now, if you wanted to like show like, a YouTube clip or something, you, can you use that in Doceri? Can you go to the internet and find a YouTube clip? I usually do it on the PC. Yeah, well that's what I do too, but. I just exit, and then, like I did today actually, I showed okay. the quadratic yeah. formula song. So I just exit, go to YouTube, and then bring it back up. You can, you can control the computer with the iPad, though. So, yeah. So you mentioned that you go and find the picture and then bring it to the whiteboard here. Mm -hmm. Can you show me how to do that? I've got pictures in my saved file if you want to. I have a funny picture that I want to actually do. OK. So can I connect? And I have all the uh, books in my iPad, so all the eBooks. So I could actually I screenshot the page that I want, and then crop out the definition, and then it's in my my photos. So my photos on my iPad is just like book page, book page, <laughs> you know, definition, definition. <laughs> so that's how I did it for all of my notes. So I just screenshotted the page. Well, my there, guess is that year to year, you're fine-tuning that skill so much that I mean, it's all there. Yeah, but I mean, it's like you're making it up for the first time. Right. You know, remake that lesson, mm -hmm. or you just it's all archived. It's yeah, all a year and a half ago during the summer, I made all the notes for my intermediate algebra and my introductory algebra mm -hmm. in pre-calc. So all summer, like, we had a two-hour break between classes, and I just I just like wrote the outlines, you know, and so then I've just reused those every That's single year. Mean, yeah. I mean, so I did I did right a now. lot. Yeah, I did a lot of work once. Unless we but change now I just, textbooks. Yeah. Now I just walk to class and it's good. So when we change textbooks, we're gonna have to sit down and create all the lecture notes again. Um, some people just lecture from the new book and then cut out their work, and what they have left is the outline. So as they lecture, they're creating it. Then they lasso and cut all of the work out of it, and they just leave the actual problems and definitions. Uh. Okay, so I am in one of my files, and I'm just going to add a page. And now I want to put in a picture, so I'll go into my library, and then there's a picture that I wanted to show. Where'd it go? So you can oh, yeah. book pages, book pages. Yeah, see, these are, these are all pictures of my calculus book. So I just choose one, and I modify and bring it here, and then I can just. Oh my god. And they don't yeah. actually see it until, until you click off of the picture. So I took the picture with the camera on the iPad. You crop it however you want, and now it's in your camera roll. So when you're in creating your templates, just click the mountain picture, go to your iPhone uh, photos, and then you have Where's this picture I'm trying to find? It's really fun. It's my babe, friend's baby. Oh, here it is. OK, this is one of my favorite pictures ever. OK. It's Batman <laughs> slapping Robin across the face because he doesn't know how to add his fractions. Oh, that's, oh, <laughs> where's the kapow? <laughs> kapow. <laughs> Sure. Here, I'll write Kapow. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> it's a simpler time bomb. It's a simpler time. Now they pull out like you know. <laughs> right. Right. Cool. Yeah. So you can write on the pictures. You can yes. move the pictures. Copy that. And what I do is um, like because we if we do a lot of graphing, I'll create my x and y axes, and I'll just lasso them and copy and then paste it to the next few pages so I don't have to try to draw the lines correctly every time. Sorry. Yeah. Cool. Does that answer your question, Tracy? Yeah. It does, yeah. Good. So yeah, I would recommend definitely taking your pictures and then cropping them however you want. And so it's really easy to just put it into your file and then resize it.
So. Anything else you guys want to know? Are you able to connect like with somebody's mobile and you interact with my yeah. lesson? No, I don't think we have that capability. That would be good. Yeah, it's one connection at a time. What's that? One connection at a time. Yeah. Cool. Sure, thanks for coming.